Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be giving you a masterclass of how a challenger player is able to completely dismantle a platinum Aatrox in the first 3 minutes of the lane as Aurelia. There's a common misconception in the league community that they cannot learn from smurf games, often dismissing super valuable information and saying things like, yeah of course a challenger will crush this platinum player. But what you need to ask yourself is how did they do that and how can you do it too? Well, in this guide we're going to be teaching you exactly that, setting up trades that you can't lose into early kills and snowballing out of control. We quickly want to mention that you can get way more of these guides on our website skillcapped.com. We only release a few of these guides on YouTube each month but release 12 guides per week on our website. Check it out if you want to start rapidly improving and start carrying your games like we're about to see Hector do right now. Let's break down the matchup. Our challenger player Hector is playing Aurelia. His first mission is going to be get a minion lead. For wave clear, both champions are about even, but it's up to whoever lands a better trade early to decide who has wave control which we'll talk more about soon. Mission 2, look for extended trades. Aurelia wins extended trades because of her passive, increasing her attack damage and attack speed drastically once fully stacked. Aatrox wins short burst trades however because his abilities deal more damage. Aatrox has more range on his abilities, but Aurelia can gap close larger distances. Aurelia will look to gap close to low health minions to win extended trades against Aatrox and look for all ins, which brings us to her mission 3, look for all ins. This matchup is inherently volatile because both champions are melee, so they have to get up close to land any last hits, meaning that any mistake can go heavily punished immediately. For this reason, Aurelia will want to look for all ins onto the Aatrox if he misplays. Alright, let's get into the gameplay. As the game starts, both ways touch but we're about to see that Aurelia is not interested in autoing the minions at all just yet, but her mission 1 is getting a minion lead. Try to identify why she isn't hitting the minions. So Aurelia wasn't hitting the minions because Aatrox was not hitting the wave because he wants to use his passive for trading. So Aurelia can just wait until the minions are low enough where she can last hit with her Q to stack her own passive. If Aatrox had been hit in the wave, his passive would be down and Aurelia can walk up and match him on minion damage. This seems more champion specific than it is since Aurelia is just playing around Aatrox passive as if it was an ability that she wanted to avoid, a fundamental trading concept similar to how you would want to wait for a Yasuo Q to be used before walking up to the wave. Anyway, Aurelia picks up the first melee with her Q and autos Aatrox once and then Qs the second melee but sadly misses Q on the third. To most players, using her Q and auto like this may not seem like a big deal. However, he actually just completed mission 1, get a minion lead. By queuing the minions, Aurelia begins to stack up her passive, allowing her to deal more damage and contest wave control by winning trades. But by also auto attacking the Aatrox, Aurelia actually drew minion aggro onto herself and then pulled back. In doing this, the blue wave attacks Aurelia, while the red wave attacks the blue wave, gaining Aurelia a minion health lead that she can now maintain. Anyway, Aurelia continues to auto the minions and finishes them off with her Q to keep stacking her passive, maintaining what is now a 2 minion lead for mission 1. Aurelia now has 4 stacks of her passive, and one more Q will hit the deadly 5 stacks which unlocks Aurelia to OP status. As we can see here, Aatrox is standing next to the minion that Aurelia can Q to to get to her 5th stack. In Challenger, Hector would take this opportunity to Q to the minion and get a short trade onto the Aatrox which Aurelia actually wins with her passive up and then back off. But because this is Platinum, he will do something different. Let's see what happens. Alright, so Aurelia was able to kill Aatrox at level 2, playing teleport against Aatrox's ignite, which is something that should just almost never happen. So why did this look so easy and how did he do it? Well, he took the Q to keep his passive up and then auto Aatrox once to refresh it and then proc conqueror but walks away. Why do you think he walks away? 
So Hector knows that he will get level 2 off the first melee on the second wave. He pulls back because instinctively most players feel like they're winning when they had their opponent on the run. This is especially common in Platinum and below. He pulled back here to keep Aatrox interested while he buys time to get this melee low enough for a Q into a 5th stack passive, level up all in onto Aatrox thanks to completing mission 1 earlier and now executing on missions 2 and 3. Now you may be thinking that this is super Aurelia specific or that Aurelia is just broken, and it kind of is, but you can definitely do this stuff on a wide range of champions by applying the exact same concepts. Let us explain. The key moments that led to this massive advantage that Aurelia was able to secure was done so by simply gaining an experience advantage and then looking to trade upon a level lead. Something pretty much every champion can do and the results were amplified due to the volatile melee versus melee matchup and of course Aurelia being really strong in all ends with her passive and her mobility. But for example, a Renekton could have easily gotten an insane extended trade or even a kill with a level 2 lead while being in position to trade as soon as he gets level 2. Or an Akali who would hit level 2, move forward, Q into Shroud, Auto and Q. Or a Jax who would E with Autos and then Q to Gap Close, etc. All of these scenarios are reaping the rewards of securing a level advantage and being in position to capitalize on it as soon as they level up. At Skillcapped, we've seen countless examples of players not taking advantage of their level lead and throwing away these deadly windows of opportunity due to either not being aware of when they'll level up, or understanding the advantage of a level lead this early in the game, or both. So take note, first melee on the second wave gives level 2, and third melee on the third wave gives level 3. These are super important level spikes because not only would you be a level up on the enemy, but you literally have an extra ability to work with, let alone the base stat increases. Anyway, Aurelia now shoves the wave, recalls and gets back into lane. She didn't have to teleport because she shoved the wave before recalling, meaning that it will push back towards her as she walks to lane. She places a control ward and Aatrox tries to all in with his minion lead here and he still has ignite available. However, Aurelia was able to stack up her passive really fast and win out this 1v1 pretty easily, despite getting unlucky with just about missing this melee minion with her Q, denying its reset. But what do you think that Aurelia should do next now that she's killed Aatrox again? So you may be thinking that she should either push the lane or recall. The correct answer here is to actually stay in lane and let the wave push towards her. Here's why. If Aurelia was to try and crash the wave into the tower, then Aatrox would come back and pick up some minions because towers take a really long time to kill cannon waves, making this a mediocre choice for snowballing her lead. Aurelia doesn't want to recall right now because she simply doesn't have to. She has a ton of mana and health sustain with corrupting potions to heal up with, so she can stay in lane with the help of her Q healing, Dorian's Blade, and Bloodline. By staying in lane and letting the larger blue wave push into the red wave towards her tower, it will deny Aatrox the current red wave, and a couple of minions from the next wave. Denying experience is super valuable in the lower levels, not only because experience leads can give you those massively powerful leads to level 2, 3, and 6 with the ability advantage, but also because experience is flat out way more valuable in the early game. Minion experience does not scale over time, it always stays the same. What doesn't stay the same is the amount of experience needed to level up. Aatrox is currently level 4, and to reach level 5 he needs 2 minion waves totaling to 580 experience. In comparison, if he was level 10, he would need 1180 experience to hit level 11, which is 4 minion waves. As we can see, denying a wave of experience at level 4 costs Aatrox half an entire level. Let's speed this up as we see Aatrox lose a cannon wave and 4 additional minions. Once Aatrox finally crashes this huge wave into Aurelia's tower, he thinks it's safe to look for Harass. But Aurelia actually uses minion waves to trade with, so she's more than happy to go all in once again for mission 3 and score yet another kill, putting her 3-0 at 5 minutes. So this was pretty brutal for Aatrox and you're probably wondering how it all went wrong for him and what he could have done differently. 
it all goes back to level 1 where Aatrox did not contest Aurelia's Q on the first wave. As Aatrox, he can actually cancel Aurelia's Q mid-dash, which puts it on cooldown, denying her ability to stack passive, neutralizing her threat and allowing Aatrox to take control over the wave, denying Aurelia's mission 1. Maokai's Q and Gragas E would also cancel Aurelia Q with the same interaction. However, if you were playing Pantheon, you would pressure Aurelia off with just Q harass. If you were playing Renekton, you would look to W if she goes in. Jace would pressure her off the wave with a ranged lead, or Jax could just walk at her with E. The takeaway is don't let Aurelia stack passive uncontested at the start if your champion can do anything about it. If you played a champion like Nara or Kennen, you actually wouldn't do enough immediate damage to pressure Aurelia off the wave, so just be aware that Aurelia can stack this up, and instead look to contest her if she extends for Qs on the ranged minions instead. The second thing that Aatrox messed up big time was not recognizing that he was at an experience disadvantage and chasing Aurelia as she baited him in for that all in. He should have just backed off and waited until he was level 2 before approaching the wave again. After that, Aatrox had pretty much no chance because he died at level 1 with Ignite versus Teleport in a snowball volatile melee matchup where Aurelia could just keep scoring kills over and over. Alright, so that brings us to the end of this one. Thanks for watching and we will catch you next time.